lot of mechanics, they can take something apart, put it back together. They don't have to follow each and every instruction uh, uh, that there is there, but that's because they've done it for a while. Maybe they got shown by somebody else, but uh, if there's a certain procedure or a certain method of repair that they need to go, they have to follow those directions that's been already outlined, set, set that uh, is successful, and documented in a, in a manual. So here, I want to document it in our operating procedures so that everybody works on that same wavelength, that we have consistency all the way through. <clears throat> set up to the setup chart, not by the seat of the pants, because you know, seat of the pants, an uh, experienced operator can make good time of it. Inexperienced one's going to waste a lot of time trying to fish around and try and get that just that right feel and that right setting before they can successfully run that mill. So we want to start out with a setup chart that we're going to be looking at here right off the bat so that we can apply all this information right at the start of the mill. What's the very beginning of any mill? Fail for real. Got the material coming in there. Uh, Got to make sure that that piece of machinery is in good shape too. How many people have accumulators before they go into the mill? How many people go right off the pail up reel right into the mill? Some that way too. Or coil the coil, whatever the case may be. Got to make sure that we have our arms on there for safety, but what, what does our brake pressure want to be, especially if we're going directly into the mill? What do we want to have our brake pressure set at? Just enough so we just don't pre-spin because if we have it any tighter than that, what are we doing to the entire drive line of the mill. Yep, just pulling it down and we're going to create more wear because what bison drives the strip to the mill? But the tooling. 